If you've borrowed $10,000 with a repayment plan of $500 per month and the interest is 8% compounded monthly, how many payments will you need to make to repay your loan? In this video, I'll show you how to algebraically solve for the variable n, which represents the total number of periods in the present value of annuity formula. Here we have a situation where we know the present value, which is 10,000. We know the payment frequency and the amount per period, which is $500. And you also know the nominal interest rate, which is 8% compounded monthly. How do we find how many payments will be required to pay off this $10,000 loan? Before we start solving for N, I just want to point out that the interest rate, which is compounded monthly, corresponds with the cash flow, which is monthly. Now, if that weren't the case, you would have to modify the 8% interest rate so that it matches the cash flow. But in this case, it's the same. So you have one of two options at this point to solve for n, one of which is to substitute those values in where they belong into the formula, then solve for n, and the other option is to solve for n, then substitute those values afterwards. Let's perform the latter. The very first thing that I'll do is I will divide both sides of this equation by PMT. What this will do is it will cancel out this variable with that variable. So I have PV divided by PMT is equal to everything that remains on the right side. So I'll just rewrite that part on the right side. The next step is to remove these brackets as they are no longer necessary. And I'll multiply both sides by a factor of I. What this will do is it will cancel out the two I's that are on the right side, the one here and the one there. And we're left with what remains, as you see. Let me rewrite that clearly for you. Following that step, I will now transfer over that term over to the left side and this term over to the right side. Here's what happens if you do that correctly. You'll end up with one plus i raised to the power of negative n. Notice that the negative becomes positive once you transfer it over to the left side. And this, term, which is currently positive, becomes negative. So we have 1 take away that term, PV over PMT times I. The next step is to take the natural log of both sides, and that's represented using LN. There's a reason why we do this, and that is it allows us to make the exponent negative n more workable. So applying the logarithm rules, we end up having negative n times natural log of 1 plus i. And notice that the exponent of negative n is no longer an exponent if we write it this way. And on the right side, we have the natural log of 1 take away PV over PMT multiplied to I. At this point, we're almost done. All we have to do is divide both sides by negative LN 1 plus I. By doing this, this factor and that factor cancel out, and so does the negative. So we have N, which is the total number of periods, is equal to what you see on the right side. We are now ready to substitute those values in where they belong, the 10,508%. Let's go ahead and do that. N is equal to LN, and in brackets, one take away. Our present value is 10,000, that was the borrowed amount, over 500, which was the monthly payments, multiplied to I. Now remember, i is equal to the nominal rate divided by t, which is the number of compounding periods per year. For us, that's monthly, so we divide our nominal rate by 12. So we have 0 0.08 divided by 12, and that will be placed in for i. Now, you're more than welcome to compute that, but I'll just leave it as it is. I'll let my calculator do it. And that's being divided by negative ln bracket 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12. 
Using your calculator, you can substitute all these values in at once. So you'll click natural log, one take away, and in parentheses, 10,000 divided by 500, close parenthesis, open parenthesis, 0 0.08 divided by 12, close, close. That's the numerator. Divided by negative ln, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12, and we end up with our final answer of 21.5365 periods. 21.5365 periods. Remember that for this example, our periods are monthly. So this number is technically telling us that we need to make just over 21 and a half monthly payments. In the next video, I'll show you how to deal with partial periods. As you can see, 21 is too little and 22 would be too much. So we'll look at two options on how to pay that partial period considering its future value. Thank you for watching and we'll see you later.